Hi guys, welcome back to Super Math for you. This is Mr. Rego, and today we're finding all the zeros of polynomial function using the rational zero theorem. A couple things that we need to explain is rational zero. Rational means fraction. So we're going to use something that's a fraction and is a zero of the function, which means our doors are the x intercepts. If they're real zeros, if they're imaginary, then they're not going to touch the x axis. And that'll be a video for, for the future. Okay, let's start with the first problem. When they're asking you for the zeros, guys, the main idea is to understand that they're asking you find the values of x that will make your function equal zero. That's the whole goal. Okay. Normally, when you have a polynomial like this, what you want to do is you make this equal to zero and try to factor. All right. Because I have four terms, then you have to use grouping as factoring. For that, please check the video on the description. Now, all the problems that we're going to do, you're not able to do by, by grouping because that's not our goal for this video. Okay. Our goal for this video is using the rational zero theorem, which is P over Q. Because remember, rational is a fraction. P are all the factors of my constant. Q are all the factors of my leading coefficient. If there's no number there, you have a one. So factors of negative 12 are 12 times one, six times two, four times three nothing else. Now, because my product is negative, then one of them has to be negative. So let's pretend that this is going to be negative, negative, and negative, right? That will give me a negative 12. Now, another way of doing that is by flipping negative 12 times positive 1, or negative 6 times positive 2, or negative 4 times positive 3. If you notice, all of these products are going to give me negative 12. Regardless if I have a positive 12 or a negative 12, or negative one or positive one, right? So to make this thing easier, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use plus or minus 12, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and so on and so forth. So in general, that's what we're gonna use. So now you understand that I can flip my signs and I'll get the same answer, okay? Q is simple. There's only one times one. In that case, I would have one times one or negative one times negative one. Okay, same thing is going to give me a, a product of one. All right, what we're looking right now is for all the possible zeros. So we're going to write P over Q. Okay, the factors of P, we're going to organize them in increasing order, plus or minus one, then you have the two, then you have the three, the four, all of them divided by Q. So these are P over Q. Then what we need to do is divide all of the P's by all of the Q's. Right now it's simple because you only have one. So my answer, all this divided by one, it will be the same thing. So this is the list of all possible zeros. Keep that in mind. Now having that list, what I need to do is I need to go back and check in the original polynomial to see which one is going to satisfy making my function equal to zero. To do that, we're going to use synthetic division. Okay, let's go. Remember to do synthetic division, I bring the coefficients, but the first thing is I need to make sure that there's nothing missing. I got x cubed, x squared, x, and I have my constant. So there's nothing missing. Be careful with that. After that, I bring the coefficients from every single term. I make my box. And now the first value that I'm going to check is I'm going to use the positive 1, x equals 1, and see if this is a 0. I bring the 1 over here, and then I start my process all the way down. 1 times 1 is 1, add is 3, 1 times 3 is 3, negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8, 1 times negative 8, and that gives me negative 20. This doesn't work out. The next value that I need to try is negative 1, and you go in order one at a time. I tried the positive, didn't work out, I tried the negative 1. If that doesn't work out, I keep going. For the most part, you'll get an answer in the first two or three. Okay, let's try negative 1. The first value comes out, negative 1 times 1. Add negative 12, multiply positive 12, you add, and you get a zero. When this is the remainder and you get a zero, that means the value that you check, the negative one, is a zero of my function. And that's what I'm looking for. So I have my first answer. Okay? Keep it in mind, once I go through synthetic division, my exponent is going to go down one. So if I start with x cubed, now there's going to be x squared, and you go in order, plus 1x minus 12. And now I have a trinomial, which is to the second power. At this point, you can use this trinomial and you can factor it. Also, you can use the quadratic formula. Right now, this is an easy trinomial, so let's factor it. Make my trinomial equal to zero. Factor, product, and sum. 
my numbers are 4 times 3 to get a negative 12 factoring. Please check the link in the description. So my factors are going to be x plus 4, x minus 3, don't forget the equal to 0, and now i got to find the values of x. Here I do minus 4, minus 4, and my value of x is negative 4. And the second one is going to be equal to 3. So now I have x equals negative 1, x equals 4, x equals negative 4, I'm sorry, and x equals 3. Those are my zeros of the polynomial. Now, if you notice, I have 1, 2, and 3. Why I have 3? Because my highest exponent, the degree of the polynomial function, is 3. I'm going to get the same number of zeros as my highest exponent. Okay? Uh, let's try another one. Now, let's work on number 2. The question is, list all possible zeros and find all the rational zeros. That's always the question. Sometimes they just ask you for the first part, list all possible zeros. A full problem will ask you, list and find them. In our case, we're doing both. So, now we know that it's going to be P over Q. There's no number you have a 1 there. My factors of 2 are 2 times 1. And the factors of Q are 1 times 1. So now we know that this is going to be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. And here it's going to be plus or minus 1. Let's do P over Q. Now that we know that we're dividing by 1, so it's going to be the same values. Now, out of those values, those are my zeros. Let's go back to the previous problem, so let me show you something. Now... In this problem, guys, look, negative 1, negative 1 was here. Uh, negative 4, look at negative 4 here. Positive 3, positive 3 is here. So these zeros that we find at the end, my answers, are going to be some of this. I'm not going to get an answer like x equals, x equals 5. Why? Because 5 is not here. I'm not going to get an x equals 10 because 10 is not here right? These are the only options. If by any chance you find a different number, that means you're doing it wrong, okay? Keep that in mind. These are the list of the possible zeros. Let's go back. Now that we understand that, these are the only options. Now we do synthetic division. Let's bring the coefficients. Remember, cube, square, x, constant, nothing is missing. So coefficients are 1, 4, 5, and 2 divided by, we always start with the easiest one, which is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 5, 1 times 5 is 5, 10, 1 times 10 is 10, 12. I didn't get a 0, so this is not a 0. Let's try negative 1. We bring the 1 down. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, 3, negative 3, positive 2, negative 2, and 0. Oh, we got a 0. That means this is an answer. And now these are the coefficients for x squared. This is an x. And this is a 2 because this is my remainder. There's no remainder because I'm finding the 0. This, should, this always had to be a 0 in order for me to be an answer. Now, guys, I can factor this trinomial. Okay? I have x here and I have x here. This is going to be uh, 2 times 1. So it's 2 times 1. And let's finish this. I bring my factors on the top equal to 0. Make each one equal to 0. Negative 2. My first answer is negative 2. And the second one is x plus 1 equals 0, minus 1. And now I have x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1. Oh, let me explain that. x equals negative 2. Those were part of the possible zeros. Now, guys, as we can see, I have two of the same. That means that my zeros are x equals negative 1, and that's called multiplicity. Multiplicity 2, meaning I have two of the same value. All right, so x equals negative 1 multiplicity 2. And the last answer is x equals negative 2. In that case, I only have one of them. So my multiplicity will give me be 1. And two zeros and one zero is going to give me 3, which is the highest exponent on my problem. Now, let's do a more, little more complicated one. Same idea, list all the zeros and find the real zeros. We're not doing imaginary zeros. That will be for a different uh, video. P over Q, here is going to be plus or minus 1. And 4 is only 1 times 4 or 2 times 2, which means I'm going to have a plus or minus 1, 2, and 4. For the P, this is it. So I do P over Q. P is plus or minus 1. Oh, if you notice, now the Q is a little bit more. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. So... When I divide P over Q, I got to divide the top by each one on the bottom. 1 divided by 1 gives me 1. 
1 divided by 2 is going to give me 1 half. And then 1 divided by 4 is going to give me 1 over 4. Okay? So those are the list of the possible zeros. Let's do uh, synthetic division and try them out. 4, negative 9, 6, negative 1. And I'm going to try x equals 1. Start with the easiest one always. I bring down my first value. Again, if there's questions about synthetic division, please check the video in the description. 1 times 4 is 4. UI coming down. Negative 5. 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Oh, look at this. I got a 0. That means this is a 0 already. Okay? Same as before. Now I have 4x. If this is cube, this is square. Keep in order. x, my constant. Okay? Make it equal to 0. Now I got two choices here. We can factor this, or we can use the quadratic formula. In my case, guys, I'm going to use the quadratic formula because you're going to be using this a lot. Okay? Uh, I'll, I'll go a little bit faster. Again, questions, check the video in the description for quadratic formula. So now we have our quadratic formula here. One of the answers is x equals 1 already, which is here part of my answers. I have my trinomial, and now I have this, 8x squared plus bx plus c. From here, you know what's a was B and was C. We just need to plug it back in here. All right, so let's follow the process. Now I have my quadratic formula. The A is 4, the B is negative 5, the C is positive 1. Plug it in. X equals negative B, which is negative 5, plus or minus B squared, minus 4 times A, which is 4, times C, which is 1. Everything divided by 2 times A, which is 4. Let's start solving. Two negatives gives you a positive. Inside, 25, minus 16, divided by 8. Let's keep going. 5 plus or minus, square root of that, 25 minus 16, it gives you 9, divided by 8. Square root of 9 gives you 3 by 8. At this point, you do the two answers, one of them with a the plus and the other one with the minus. The first answer is going to be 5 plus 3 is going to give me 8 over 8, which is 1. All right, and now I have two ones again, multiplicity 2. My second one is going to be 5 minus 3 divided by 8. 5 minus 3 is going to give me a 2 divided by 8. Simplify is going to give me 1 over 4. So my three zeros are x equals 1, x equals 1. So my final answer is x equals 1 multiplicity of 2. And then I have x equals negative 1 fourth multiplicity of 1. Remember, 1 zero and 2 zeros give me 3 zeros. Keep that in mind. Okay, guys, stay tuned for the next one, which is imaginary numbers. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.